abandoned and almost forgotten, Louis Monton's house, or Maison Monton, as it's locally known, has been a place of quiet for a very long time. Yes, it's a mystery, but it was his last will. The house was shut for a long time, but I never thought anything about it. That's very interesting to discover Moulin's 19th century history. The history of a house and of one person's life. For 100 years, it was hidden from view until now. Bienvenue à la Maison Montan. Visiting the house is like going back in time to when French millionaire Louis Monton was alive. It's as if he has just finished his tea. The spirit of the former owner can be felt everywhere. For visitors, it's a unique opportunity to experience history. Even the former owner's great-great-grandniece is amazed by the house. Isabelle de Chavagnac is Louis Monton's last living relative, and she too waited excitedly for the house's reopening. The reason why the house is so perfectly preserved is because it was closed after his death. If it had passed to the family or had been turned immediately into a museum, it would definitely have changed. It's been preserved in a state of sleep like Sleeping Beauty. There are many details from everyday life in the 19th century. Luckily, it's been preserved for later generations. Roland Fleury is Moulin's culture officer and was in charge of the house's restoration. Louis Monton left the house to the town's council with a requirement that it opened to the public 100 years after his death. Restoration work took five years to complete and cost about 3.4 million euros. Monton drew up extensive inventory lists and precisely described where objects should be placed. For a long time, the house was in a very bad state of repair. Of course, even for the council, it was a mysterious house. At first, people found it creepy, but once the restoration work began, they became inquisitive. This is Louis Monton's last will and testament, in which he left the house to Milan. He was born in the town and came from a well-off family. He studied law in Paris and had a career as a civil servant. At the young age of 42, he retired and returned to his hometown where he built the house in 1896. The house contains many wonderful things. The wall covering in the bedroom is made of gold leaf leather. Louis Monton decorated his home with great love and lavish attention to detail. I think that, like many people, he wanted to leave something behind. Most people do it with their children, but Louis Monton didn't have any. So he did it by leaving behind his art collection. Basically, the entire house is a collection. Fighting frogs. Stuffed rats wearing Napoleonic-era costumes. Monton brought many of the house's items back from his travels. The more I get to know about Monton, the stronger the feeling I have that I'm visiting an uncle who will turn up in a minute. And while I'm waiting, I can look around the rooms and discover new things. I have the feeling the house is steadily turning into my own house. It's not like my home, but it's like visiting a family member. Monton loved modernity. Not only does the house have flowing water, but the bathroom even has cold and hot water taps. That was very unusual in the 19th century. As were these lamps. Every room in the house had electric light. Imagine Moulin, une ville. Imagine what Moulin was like back then. Two hours from Paris, but with modern technology, like electricity. This was the first house in the town to have electricity. It was most unusual. I can be proud of someone who made their mark on Moulin in such an important way. Louis Monton died in Moulin in 1905, after living for just nine years in the house which meant so much to him. 
He wanted to leave something behind for his hometown and future generations. He's also made sure that his memory will always remain alive.